Welcome back everyone. Although we left Jeremiah at a bit of a cliffhanger last time, he did survive and this turns out to be a way of life for Jeremiah. He gives a prophecy from God telling the people to change their ways and then he's usually arrested or attacked by the officials. If you think it's a glamorous life to be the prophet of God, in Jeremiah's case it was far from it. So today's story is called The King's Penknife taken from Jeremiah chapter 36. For more than 20 years, Jeremiah went on warning the people of Judah to turn back to God before their enemies destroyed Jerusalem. Now God said to Jeremiah, write down all the messages I have ever told you from the time when Josiah was king up to the present. Perhaps the people will listen to them and be sorry that they have disobeyed me. Then I can forgive and rescue them. So what a wonderful God. For 20 years, he's having Jeremiah warn the people to turn back to God, turn away from the idols and all the sins that they're doing. God is still giving them chance after chance to repent. Will they take it this time? We'll see. Jeremiah bought a papyrus scroll, and papyrus is a reed that grows in Egypt, they would pound it flat and then they would take strips of it and, and crisscross them and pound it again and stick them together and that would form their paper. If you ever see pictures of papyrus, it almost looks like a plaid. You can see the crisscross weave of the reeds in it. And then when it's pounded flat and dried, they could write on it. So Jeremiah bought a scroll and Baruch, his helper, began to write down everything that Jeremiah dictated. When they had finished at last, Jeremiah said, go to the temple and read the scroll to the people. I am not allowed to go there, so you must tell them God's words. And he wasn't allowed because he'd given prophecies so many times at the temple and caused such upset with the kings and the rulers that they banned him from going there and talking anymore. If Jeremiah went himself, He'd just be arrested right off the bat and the people would never hear the message from God. Baruch waited until the crowds were flocking to the temple for a holy day. So they still follow the holy days even though they worship idols. Strange. Then Baruch read to them all that he had written down. One listener told some of the palace officials about the scroll and they asked to see it too. Not all of the king's people were against Jeremiah. When these officials heard Jeremiah's stern words, they knew that he would be in trouble if the king were to find out. So they said to Baruch, you and Jeremiah must hide while we take the scroll to the king. This is an important message and the king must hear this warning. It was winter and King Jehoiakim was sitting beside a blazing fire to keep warm. As his secretary read the first part of Jeremiah's scroll to him, the king's face grew dark with anger. He snatched the scroll and with his penknife slashed away the part that had been just read. He threw it onto the fire and watched it burn up. As his secretary continued to read, the king listened but would stop him and cut off the section he didn't like and burn that part in the fire. And he did this over and over until he had heard all the warnings to the people and the entire scroll had gone up in flames. Arrest Jeremiah, the king ordered. But by this time, Jeremiah and Baruch were safely hidden by the officials who followed God. Begin again, God told Jeremiah, and write everything once more on a fresh scroll. Again, Jeremiah dictated, and again, Baruch patiently wrote, until God's word was in writing for all to hear or read from that day to this. Because you see, that was the foundation for the book of Jeremiah in the Bible. So Jeremiah had a difficult life. For 20 years, he repeated the same message over and over. Repent, turn back to God or you will be destroyed for all your sins by your enemies. But no one listened to him. The king and his officials would repeatedly arrest and beat Jeremiah. 
but he would return to repeat God's message to his people yet again. Babylon, another nation in the area, was already conquering the nations that were surrounding Judah. This imminent threat would be apparent to everyone. And that's why some of the officials wanted to take Jeremiah's messages to the king because they were hoping to convince him, look, we're in danger. Even God is telling you that we're in danger and hoping that he would change his ways, that he would change the ways of the nation. But it, it doesn't work. They knew the king would be angry because he did not like Jeremiah. They wanted to protect Jeremiah. So that's why they hid him and Baruch to ensure their safety. Sure enough, the king was angry. Having God's prophecies in a written form would make them more easily and accurately remembered. And it would allow them to be easily referred to again in the future, especially if Jeremiah wasn't around. He can't be everywhere, but also he was in danger repeatedly from the king. Every time he opened his mouth to give a new prophecy, the king threatened to hurt or have him executed. And he had killed another prophet at the time that was famous, Uriah. So it wasn't an idle threat um, against Jeremiah's life. And if you think about that telephone game where you have a lineup of people and someone whispers something into the ear of the first one and then they turn and whisper what they heard to the next person and it continues down the line. By the time you get to the last person, the message bears no resemblance whatsoever to what was originally said at the opposite end of the line. And this is another reason why it's good to have everything written down. Then there can be no argument about what was actually said. And the message Jeremiah had to the people was that there was three things that they needed to do to avoid the terrible judgments that were pronounced against them by God. They needed to hear God's word, hear the warnings, they needed to pray, and they needed to repent their behavior, their sin. It seemed simple, but they didn't want to do those things. Despite the threats to the nations around them of Babylon getting closer and closer, despite everything that Jeremiah was telling them, that they would be destroyed, that the nation would be destroyed, the city would be destroyed, the people of God would be destroyed. They still wouldn't listen. And despite all this behavior, over and over again, God gives them chance after chance to repent, to come back to him. God was still waiting with open arms to receive them, yet they chose to continue to walk away from him. And the king is perhaps the worst of all. He seemed to think that by destroying the written copy of God's prophecies, he could prevent them from actually happening, which of course is ridiculous. If you cover your ears or cover your eyes, that doesn't mean the events around you aren't happening just because you can no longer see or hear them. Ignoring danger doesn't mean that you suddenly are safe. But the king was also deliberately showing his contempt for Jeremiah and ultimately God himself by his destruction. He didn't just snatch the scroll away from his scribe at the end of the reading and throw it into the fire in a fit of anger. He deliberately took it piece by piece, cut it apart, and burned it section by section. But destroying the scroll would not prevent the destruction of his country, nor would it prevent the inevitable punishment for his sins. Now, Jehoiakim was not alone. Throughout history, there have been a number of rulers and, and regimes and in various countries when God's word was attempted to be destroyed by evil people. But none of those times were successful. Millions of people all over the world, every single day, still read and learn from the Bible today. In my research for today's um, story, I came across a true story about 100 years ago. An Armenian man was in an American hospital in Turkey, which is not a Christian country, and he was given a Bible. He took it home to his village, a small village, but it was snatched by the local Muslim teacher and torn from its covers and thrown into the street because he believed it was blasphemous, I guess. The local grocer saw it in the street picked it up and thought the paper would come in handy for wrapping packages that people bought in his store. So he ripped it off page at a time in the store and would wrap small purchases up in the paper. 
Well, the customers who got these packages, when they got home, they actually read the paper, they read the pages out of the Bible, and they enjoyed reading them, and they wanted to read more. They started passing them around amongst themselves, and, and they were clamoring to get the entire Bible. Some point later, a man was traveling through the country trying to sell Bibles to people, and he wasn't having much luck. But he came across this small village, and literally over a hundred people were clamoring to buy Bibles from him. And this is why, because they'd received a sheet of paper with their small purchases wrapped in it. They read the paper. They so enjoyed and were touched by what they read. They had a taste of it and they wanted the whole thing. They wanted the Bible. It meant so much to them. Even a torn up Bible, torn from its binding, paper shred and separated, has the power to make that kind of a change in over hundreds of people's lives. Jehoiakim's little effort of burning a scroll with God's prophecies on it had no effect whatsoever other than to seal his own fate. One of the lessons we can learn from today's story is the importance of God's written word. Jeremiah's prophecies were written down thousands of years ago and yet they're still there in the Bible for us to read today. We can learn from them today. We can learn what God expects of us, what God wants from us, and what type of being God is by reading the stories of how he's remained constant and loving throughout history. It's not enough to just listen to sermons and, and listen to services about God, but we need to read his word as well. Go right to the source and read what he has to say to us from the Bible. The best way for us to learn about God is to read about him from the Bible. And then discuss it with your parents, with your grandparents, with your friends, with your sister or brother. Make God's word come to life. It's not just words written thousands of years ago an old history that has no meaning for us today. It's just as vital today as it ever was. By spending time with God's word, by reading God's word and learning from it, we show how much we care and love and respect God because we realize the importance of his messages to us. So this week, if you don't already, I'd like you to make an effort to read your Bible every day. You could read a chapter every day. You could read a small section. Most chapters in the Bible are broken down with little subheadings of small stories or sections within that chapter. Just read one of those. It would only take you a few minutes. If you don't understand what you're reading, read it with one of your parents or grandparent and have them explain to you parts you don't understand. Or look it up if you have one of the Bibles with a commentary attached to it. And if you don't, you can look it up online. All you need to do is type in the name of the chapter that you're reading and the number and even the section of verses, and then write the word commentary after that. So, for example, this story came from Jeremiah chapter 36. So you could write Jeremiah 36 commentary, and you'll get a whole list of accepted explanations of what that chapter means or the different parts of it. You can even go through verse by verse, and there will be explanations of what each verse means. Sometimes it explains words you don't understand, or events that it refers to in another section of the Bible that you might not be familiar with. But you can always find out what the Bible means if you have difficulty reading it and understanding it yourself. So see if this week you can't make a habit of doing daily Bible readings. Set a timer for five minutes or ten minutes. Just a few minutes a day even will bring you that much closer to God when you spend time with His Word and focusing just on God and what he has to say directly to you. See you next week, and we'll see what happens next. Will Judah be saved from its fate of destruction? Will they listen to these warnings that Jeremiah keeps repeating? Will Jeremiah get sick of and just being ignored? Tune in next week, and we'll find out together. Take care. Bye-bye.